Is there chaos in the conservative leadership campaign? Well, Jean Charest's conservative leadership team says fake donation pledges to his campaign are, quote, an obvious attempt to create chaos. So what happened? Well, it begins with Melanie Paradis, the former senior staffer to the former conservative leader, Aaron O'Toole. She raised red flags on Twitter after a donation page was made in her name, a pledge was made in her name. But she says that pledge did not come from her. Uh, she's not backing any leadership candidate. Ms. Paradis is now raising the alarm bells of a potential data breach. And the charade team confirms that they are working with the party's leadership organization committee to review what happened and who may be behind it. The Conservative Party did not respond to our request for a statement, but the Canadian press reports that the party say they are, quote, taking the matter very seriously, and that the party is confident their internal membership data has not been compromised. Was there a hack? What are the implications? The press gallery is back. Our CTV National News Bureau Chief Joyce Napier is back. So is the Toronto Star's Queen's Park Bureau Chief Robert Benzie. And our special guest is the person who broke the story, conservative strategist Melanie Paradis, most recently the director of comms for Aaron O'Toole. OK, great to have everyone back. Melanie, you're back. This is great. Um, boy, when I followed your Twitter thread, like everyone else, my eyebrows popped off my head. What happened and what do you think happened? Well, I, I think it was, it seemed innocent enough. Yesterday afternoon around 2.30, I got an email from the campaign um, asking me to make good on a pledge that I had allegedly made to donate $120 to their campaign. I had not made this pledge. I'm staying neutral in this race. Um, and so I immediately sent a note to their campaign manager and flagged this. And I initially thought maybe this was a marketing ploy. Like maybe this is just a different way of getting people to you know, raise money for you. Uh, it was not. I was told, no, you did actually like sign this pledge, basically. You, you put your information in. In fact, you did it at this particular time on this particular day, because that's what the data told them. I had them dig into this a bit further because I was insistent that no, I had not done this. And that's when they found that the IP address um, for the entry into their website was coming from Kiev, from Ukraine. Um, this is a tactic that is used to mask IPs. Uh, I don't think that anyone in, in Ukraine was sitting there in the middle of a war typing in Conservative Party members into Jean Charest's website. Um, I, I do believe that there was some sort of a list that perhaps existed in 2020, which is when my, uh, and it's, this is an important part of the story, I've moved a couple times in the past two years, and in 2020 I was living in Toronto. And that's the postal code that they used when they entered my data into the website. So uh, it's a, an elaborate <laughs> uh, sort of story that took right. place over the course of a couple hours yesterday while we were investigating this. So it's weird. So just before I get <laughs> to Joyce and Ben's, how many other uh, addresses have that IP address in Ukraine? Like how many, how many other people got this kind of breach? Hundreds. <clears throat> Joyce, I mean... That's pretty remarkable. Privacy advocates have been warning there's a lack of transparency about what political parties do with the data they collect. Is this a, I don't know, a warning sign? Well, I mean, what is it, right? I mean, I'm, I'm far from being an expert, so I'm not even going to try to make believe. Uh, I, I wouldn't know how to hack someone if you paid me $10 million. Is it, you know, some nerd living in his or her, or her mom's basement? Or is this something more sinister Right. Um, it, it's hard to tell. But when you know, when people say this is a privacy breach, um, I, I'm not sure how much privacy we really do have left. I mean, when Melanie just said it was her old postal code. Um, so somebody knows something or enough from her to have that old postal code is kind of creepy in a way. Well, how, how they, they, they have half information about her and how. How, does, how do these things happen? But we have got to be careful when we invoke privacy because privacy that is invoked by government always clashes with transparency. So I'm weary of both things, the hackers and also <coughs> those people who preach for too much privacy and then we'll invoke that whenever we ask governments a question about anything. Oh, they tell us, well, this is a privacy matter. We can't, we can't uh, comment. So we've got to be careful. Uh, and, and walk a very fine line between the two. But, but um, Ben's parties have databases. Parties get voter information. Yeah. Parties have rules around those. Um, what does this tell you? 
Well, it tells you, uh, Evan, and, and, and what happened to Melanie happens to uh, other folks in other parties during leadership races. Lists are shared and uh, sometimes absconded with uh, by different people. Uh, I'm not saying that any of the leadership uh, campaigns are necessarily involved in this, uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if one of them were involved in this. I mean, that's, that's how, I mean, you have to look at who would have mm -hmm. access to this list, uh, which is obviously an older one since Melanie had, was living in Toronto. Uh, and uh, has moved to Ottawa. So that someone someone had had uh, that list from a point in time. So that means you could probably narrow it down from there. Uh, I think uh, it's it's what's worrying about it is I mean, we saw this during the uh, Freedom Convoy uh, donations. Remember those were all leaked, and some people said that they hadn't donated uh, money to the Freedom Convoys, uh, and and yet their their information was listed on there in, the, in that in that hacked donation list. That's a really scary thing because you don't want to necessarily be associated with something. I'm not saying that the donating to a leadership right. is the same as donating to a protest. But I, I mean, I wouldn't like it. Evan, you wouldn't like it. Joyce wouldn't like it. We're all nonpartisan agnostic journalists. I wouldn't like my name being on some on some uh, donation list because I've never given any money to any political party in the history of the world. <laughs> But, but Melanie, it, it does raise a real deep question about the integrity of this leadership race. Can you trust it? Yeah. Like, what does this tell you about how people can trust the conservative leadership race and, and the implications of this, Melanie? So I think that we have to be able to trust all of our elections in Canada. And, and we've got you know, municipal elections, provincial elections happening this year uh, in a number of provinces. Um, we've obviously we just went through a federal election. We have people have to be able to trust them. And that does start with the parties. We have a responsibility to make sure that we uphold the integrity of, of our own leadership election. Um, so that's one particular issue. But I just want to touch on what, what Benzi was, was hinting at there that I think, and Benzi has seen a lot. <laughs> and I've been through a lot of leadership races and, and, and elections. And so I've seen the shenanigans as well. But I think we really need to stop normalizing that. It's, it's very important that if we're going to uphold the integrity of our elections and of our leadership races, we stop normalizing shenanigans behind the scenes, these antics of screwing with each other's campaigns and messing with data and, and the dumb things that people are doing behind the scenes. Uh, Joyce, Joyce and then uh, Ben's. Uh, Joyce. Well, you know, I can't agree uh, with more with Melanie. You know, the, the shenanigans have to stop. And if anybody is indeed doing this uh, that is involved with any of the campaigns, uh, then I think people should know about it. Um, that's what I mean about, you know, privacy versus transparency. Um, this is something that we need to get to the bottom of. We need to know how this happened, what exactly happened uh, before it happens again. And then there's real damage done and real credibility eroded. Ben, last word to you on this. Um, I think the implications of this kind of thing are real. I think uh, Melanie's raised some yeah. really interesting, not just powerful issues, but we seem trust issues in the U.S. election. You don't want that to bleed up here, but this kind of thing starts raising red flags. It does. And, and the other thing, too, is remember, the Conservatives are auditioning to Canadians that they can be in government again. And I think that that's a really important thing. If you can't run your own leadership election, uh, with any integrity, people are going to say, "How are you going to be able to run the country if it's all if it's all hijinks and dirty tricks and 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 leaked lists and so on?" I think that they have to be careful of the brand damage that they do to their party writ large. Uh, and I'm again, we don't know who's behind this, but presumably whoever is behind this is a conservative partisan. So if if, if they want to hurt their party, they're doing a good job at that. Melanie, I got a minute. If you were still working, you know, in your old job, what would you do right now? What's the first step you would take? Well, the first thing they need to do is launch an investigation. I, d I understand from yeah. the party and from speaking with Leoc that that uh, is the intention, that they are going to be taking this very seriously, and they should. We've got to um, make it very clear that this is not going to be tolerated. And, it, and I really hope that it wasn't anyone from either of any of the campaign teams or a conservative activist. I, I, I hope it was just random guy in basement uh, and that we can root him out. And, and the rot that he is spreading um, through, through our party uh, election process.